we're going to give folks a um, 20 second period of time to or for each slide and 20 slides. And from there, uh, hopefully we'll get a preview. These are mostly makers and related to Make Haven. And uh, we'll, we'll move from there. I do want to say that we have uh, planned a another one of these on February 11th. Uh, this is going to be themed around inventors because that's a National Inventor Day. So if you know an inventor, uh, we have some inventors in here, but uh, we uh, we're hoping to find even more for National Inventor Day, going through their process and and what they've learned. Uh, we have six presentations. Each is going to last a little over six minutes, so probably seven minutes with um, you know with transition. Uh, so it's not going to last a full hour. Uh, what we will do after is we'll do some questions and answers. I know that some of the presenters. Uh, wanted to get some feedback on their ideas and uh, you know they, they might want to meet certain types of people so it's an opportunity to have a conversation so please stay after the uh, discussion so with that um, we are recording so these will be put up on uh, YouTube for future future reference and we can get into it. We're just going to go rapid fire through them all and we'll do questions at the very end of the whole thing. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Uh, Sunem, are you ready? Yes. Um, all right, I'm going to hit. We'll be probably much faster than I anticipate, but we'll see. Is the title also 20 seconds? All right, no. Okay, hi, my name is Sinem. Um, it's like I haven't seen them around uh, for anyone who hasn't heard my name. I'm from Turkey, that's hence the name and the accent and been living in the US for the past four years, recently graduated college and currently working as a hardware engineer and the first full-time employee of on-track rehabilitation at Makehaven. Um, and really quickly about me and my background, I graduated from Yale this past May in the middle of a pandemic um, where I majored in mechanical and electrical engineering. And as I was trying to figure out how do I prove that I majored in mechanical and electrical engineering, I decided I would put a breadboard and this uh, 3D printer, chocolate 3D printer I made. Um, but it was in the summer of my junior year where I interned at Butterfly Network, a company that makes handheld ultrasounds, I discovered from my love for medical device field. So when, a, when the opportunity came to work with medical device startup like OnTrack, I really took it, I really enjoyed it. And here's what we do at OnTrack. We are transforming concussion, rehab, con concussion rehabilitation through a technology that has three uh, subsystems. A adjustable stability balance board, a VR system where you can just play games and uh, kind of track your ocular responses, and a cloud system where we kind of bring the data that we've gathered about your uh, responses and can present that data. This slide is the first thing that I was hired to do. I think it's six, so that's why I put it there. It's SolidWorks design of uh, what the board would look like in the future, but it's an, it's an obsolete system at the moment. Um, but we're still like drawing some designs. This is what the design first looked like when I was first hired. Um, as you can see, this was a system that was more likely to give concussion than rehabilitate concussion. So I was, I was hired to make the system a little more reliable, a little more uh, safer. So this is what I made my first month um, at Makehaven, actually. Um, you can see uh, I've made it shorter. We worked on uh, changing the acrylic into aluminum. Uh, there's just like a lot of subsystems going on here that I'm not going to get into. But the idea is that there are springs on track that can move in and out and that's adjustable stability. This slide is here because this is why I joined Makehaven. Um, I needed a water jet that could fit in a 24 by 24 aluminum. And I researched everywhere around Connecticut. There was only one place that had a water jet that was as big, which was Makehaven. I might've started with water jet, but I do a lot of things in Makehaven. I do soldering. I've used a paint hood just recently. 
I use the grinding belt creatively. The, um, the 3D printer is, is kind of where you can always see me drill press, anything and everything, you name it, I try to use it. Um, in on track, I do a bunch of things. I do electrical, mechanical, and software. This is part of the electrical where we work with some load cells to figure out the total mass on the system. And also we can figure out the center of mass and where you're standing on the board. We've gone through many iterations, both in terms of our electronics and our mechanical. These are a couple mechanical iterations that you can see. So I also work with the mechanical parts of it. I design our enclosures. I design what the board is gonna look like, where all the subsystems are gonna go. How it's all gonna uh, play out is kind of what I've been working on, I am sorry. And I write a little bit of code as well. Um, because when you work with sensors, you have to do a little bit of firmware. Um, and on the left, you can see me working on, on the bench. Don't do that. It's not good. JR will not be happy, but this was, that was way time ago. So that's what I do. And also I work on validation and verification of our system. On the left, you can see uh, a creative way we've come up with the, to validate the tilt sensors that we have on board. And on the right, you can see our uh, intern, Andrew, about to jump into some dynamic uh, verification of our system. Another thing that I really, really like about being part of Makehaven is kind of the creativity it allows me to do. On the left, you can see me using some uh, parallels to test out the strength of a joint, a solder joint. On the right, you can see we've created our own little photo photograph studio in what is now the bio chamber. Um, and here are a couple other moments from my, my Haven journey. On the left is my pure ecstasy. It's just been so much fun. In the middle where I'm frustrated with some soldering. And on the right is kind of the chill moments that I really, really enjoy where I just get to do some soldering and watch some Dungeons and Dragons. What have we done since I've joined? We've shipped two boards. Um, the board on the left is 1.1, version 1.1, where we shipped to University of Nebraska. And this board on the right is one we shipped this past October to San Diego Naval Health Research Center. There are research partners, and we're trying to gather some data to validate our system with them. And we keep working and we keep uh, getting better. At this, we recently hired a VR intern who's creating new VR games for us. This is gonna be very, very exciting and doing some other data stuff I don't really understand, but it's gonna be cool. These are some other things that I've been working on recently. We're working on board 2.0. We're trying to activate the system with which we can move the springs in and out. On the left is some of my scribbles where I've been working on. I've prototyped a bunch of different versions, um, been working on SolidWorks, um, just trying to come up with the best way how we can activate the system. If you want to learn more about on track, you can go to www.ontrackrehab.com. Here's a picture of me with two of our co-founders. We're a bigger team than that, but this is kind of, this was the pure ecstasy moment of finishing the first board and taking a picture. So I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Uh, next up, we have myself and Lior, who are going to go through some of the tools at Makehaven. All right, Lior, why don't you do this one? Uh, great. So <clears throat> we've gotten a whole bunch of wedding welding tools set up recently, and I actually just came here from badging people on the oxyacetylene rig. So with oxyacetylene, you can melt metal, which lets you fuse them. You can braze, which is slightly cooler than melting. Uh, we also have a great new MIG welder. So this is a big upgrade from our old one. It's a Miller welder. So this lets you weld steel and aluminum really easily. It's referred to as a hot glue gun of metalworking because it's, it's pretty easy to use and it makes great welds. Um, I recently made a, made a huge wood storage rack out of us using that tool, a plasma cutter. Um, this wouldn't be used for, it overlaps a bit with the water jet cutter. The water jet is superior in a lot of ways. The one way that this excels is by being really fast and by being freehands. If you want to be more artistic or cut on curved shapes, then that's a tool. The end mill sharpener uh, is a tool we picked up from New Jersey, I believe. And this is a really cool tool that sharpens end mills. So end mills are drill bits that cut sideways that you use when you are milling things. Uh, and it's 
saves a ton of money to be able to sharpen them. So members can resharpen the bits that they want to use. The JR, just let me know when you want to. No, yeah, keep going. Uh, the English wheel is a tool we just picked up. You can tell it's from a NASCAR shop by the flames that are on the sides. And it's used for doing compound bends in metal, like you can see in the picture on the right, for doing bumpers and gas tanks and hopefully other non-automotive purposes. This is a related tool called a shrinker stretcher. So this is used for putting curves around the edges of metal. So it works in tandem with the English wheel to do sort of curved sheet metal type work. So I'm excited to see the kinds of things that people think to make with those tools that we grabbed from that closing NASCAR shop. Whole bunch of pneumatic tools we just got set up. Uh, we recently got a really big air compressor. So the, our pneumatic capabilities opened up a whole lot. The ones you have here are nibbler on the top left corner. That lets you do curved cuts in sheet metal, a sander, a saw, uh, a, a pneumatic shear on the bottom right for cutting straighter lines. This is a kiln that we just literally got today. Um, this is great for enameling, for heat treating, for pottery, for sintering, for forging, for casting. Uh, so they're, I mean, making pizza in 15 seconds. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a really exciting tool that I've been excited for for a long time. This is a drum sander. So uh, it has a whole cylinder in the middle that spins with sandpaper on it and a conveyor belt on the bottom that conveys wood through it. It is 22 inches wide, but it's open. So you could potentially take a 44 inch wide piece of wood, pass it through, flip it 180 and pass it through again and get can... really wide pieces. Go for it. Yeah, so this is a tufting gun. This is uh, used to make essentially carpet. And what you can, it will rapidly put the threads through a uh, larger sheet that you, you hold. And we've already had some people uh, exploring and enjoying uh, using this. Uh, this is a resin printer. It resin printer differs from the regular printer that pours out plastic. This uses light to cure, uh, harden a resin. And we got the uh, type, it's Form Labs 3B, which can actually do human biocompatible resin. So these are special resins, uh, which you can use for prototyping of bio and, and medical things. Um, we have a station set up for VR development that was already uh, mentioned. We have a VR headset there. We've also been using it as a uh, remote learning control station. So it has a, uh, some software that allows us to manage and control multiple webcams when we're doing things. Just very recently, we're excited to have added a very large format printer that can print a huge banner size and almost infinite as far as like down the roll. Uh, the materials are heavy duty so they can be outside and you can print like outdoor banners. Also looking at how we can print uh, like large plans to lay things out. Alongside that is uh, for a little while we've had this vinyl cutter, but this vinyl cutter is an upgrade that has optical registration which allows you to print stickers on that big printer. And then this will then take a knife and cut those out uh, exactly registered to the right uh, dimensions. And uh, just recently ordered and on the way is this is an injection molder. So this is a prototyping injection molder. We had a hand-drawn one. This is actually uh, you know, automated and it allows you to do fairly large uh, plastic injections. An injection molder takes uh, melted plastic and pushes it into a mold, the type of molds you can make on our various other machines. Uh, this is our screen printing machine, an upgraded one that has what are called micro adjustments. That's all these knobs you see to the side. This allows you to get very precise registration and allows you to do different color processes where you're actually getting uh, the in-between colors by overlaying sort of like comic books have the little dots. Uh, and this is just an addition in our growing uh, casting area. This is uh, for melting wax uh, that would be useful for uh, candles and, and holding the wax there. So we, we uh, can do more with casting and making the silicone molds for a candle and then pulling the wax off of this machine. And then we talked about it uh, before, so I haven't focused on it, but we have been outfitting and are near to launching our community bio room. So this is all about uh, science and exposing people through uh, to biology and combining that with the maker movement, uh, something that a lot of maker spaces are doing and we're excited about. Uh, so just to put a shout out to our wish list for those members that are here, uh, we collect and people vote on what they most want to see. And this uh, impacts our decision-making. Our decision-making is based on a lot of things like where we can get grants and 
what infrastructure we have to support it. But this obviously is a big part of it. So remember to go to the wish list and vote. And the other thing is that we are um, we are always looking at new equipment to add. Lior just put out a thing where he was asking people to vote on what in the woodworking shop they would like the most, and folks are doing that. And it's just a shout out to the New Haven Innovation Collaborative and CT Next, who have been big supporters in helping us uh, get these the resources to do this, uh, along with all the individual donations from members and friends. So that puts us naturally at our next speaker. Uh, Michael, are you there? Do we have your audio? Yeah, yeah, ha happy to get started. Thanks for that, Chair. Great. Um, so my name is Michael Harris. I'm the director of the New Haven Innovation Collaborative. You may have previously known us as the Elm City Innovation Collaborative, and we've been funding projects in New Haven uh, for approximately uh, three and a half years now. Um, so what we are is we're a local initiative that does the planning um, and project development for a state grant that is funded by CT Next. And CT Next is a quasi-public state agency that's focused on investing in the ecosystem for entrepreneurship. So that's programs that support entrepreneurs. Uh, our program is called the Innovation Places Program. And so usually about twice a year, we develop a series of projects that, uh, that our group thinks will be impactful uh, to support entrepreneurship in New Haven. We apply to CT Next for funding, and then we distribute it out to a series of projects um, here locally. Now, each of those projects is usually a matching grant, which means that there's a dollar for dollar funding that needs to come from those partners or from other sponsors. And so far, we've, we've launched about 17 programs um, across New Haven. The way that our process works is that we have strategies that are developed uh, through public input that then become approved by our group. Those become our calls for projects. And then once those are reviewed by our group again, uh, they're awarded funding when we pitch uh, those projects to the state. So some of these would be things like Make Haven, uh, I've Squared, um, and a lot of the equipment's talked about so far. We have a board of 13 members. That's the group that approves uh, both our strategies and our projects. They're made up by some institutional perspectives, um, some community perspectives, um, and people who have experience in some of our key sectors. And so when we recently reformulated our board this summer, that included uh, bioscience, uh, healthcare delivery, software, and food business. Um, as well as perspectives from founders, uh, investors, uh, university partners, um, and community activists. And so <clears throat> this group will, four times throughout the year, choose to uh, approve strategies and then invest in projects. So I just want to run through some of the types of things that we've invested in in the past and then end with an invitation. So the first is these facilities for businesses like Make Haven or the City Seed Commercial Food Kitchen. Um, our goal here is really providing the dollars so that businesses don't need to invest in all the equipment themselves. This is really true on the small scale food business, but also at the high end lab incubator, where a lot of these companies that need maybe just one station or one bench uh, don't have the resources to build the space that they need. And so some investments at Science Park and planning uh, other bioscience spaces downtown are trying to make downtown a better place to start a business uh, in bioscience. We're also trying to invest to make sure that New Haven residents can get jobs at those businesses. And so have been investing in things like the Biopath at Southern, uh, where we put professional instrumentation in classrooms and then paid for people to get uh, internships over the summer uh, in some of these labs. Um, other programs include things like computer science education. So breaking out of bioscience to look at software. Uh, in a full pipeline, the program at the left is all about the digital divide, getting computers into homes that don't have them. The program at the right, the Holberton School, is a two-year full, uh, uh, full stack development for software. <clears throat> all of this is building, though, to try to support entrepreneurs through space or talent. And we have a few programs that directly support entrepreneurs. So that, for example, Collab, uh, which had their pitch day at the State House, which is a venue that we supported. Also, I've Squared with their entrepreneur in residence and uh, creative in residence programs um, and their robust online programs. Uh, our last category is that we've been investing in some public space improvements. So on the right, it's a partnership between the Town Green um, and uh, the previous creative in residence uh, at the library, um, as well as some of the murals that we've installed um, because we believed fundamentally that the spaces that uh, our businesses inhabit need to be welcoming and inviting to the entire New Haven community uh, if we're going to be building the type of connections that will drive collaboration. Those are things like the night market in our pre-COVID era 
<clears throat> and a lot of the public spaces, um, both downtown and at Science Park, um, where we're trying to help people connect. So all of this is an overview of what we've done, and this leads to what are we trying to do next? And so we're about to enter a phase of building strategies for our next round of funding that will start in next July. And so what we'd like to do is to open an invitation to people active in our project partners um, to help provide input into what we should be focusing on. And the first big question is, what is going on? And how can we describe and measure that? What uh, are the long-term trends that were happening pre-COVID? What has been COVID-19's impact on our local entrepreneurship and small business uh, ecosystem? There's a few different ways that we can approach answering those questions. Um, here are a couple examples. Um, <clears throat> so before COVID, we know that there's data, there's a racial gap in capital access um, that leave Black and Latinx businesses severely undercapitalized. They've also been much less successful and have faced larger barriers to accessing government assistance. Um, but we also see long-term trends in the types of intellectual property that's being licensed. Um, we also see things like self-employed industry or solopreneurs have been the hardest hit by COVID-19's uh, unemployment and economic impact. And so whether it's as simple as a sentence that somebody wants to submit or a study um, or a piece of uh, a testimonial, we'll have ways that people can submit both written and video options. The next, the next question is we would have in response to what's going on, what would you do? What do you think the city as a whole should be investing in um, to achieve inclusive growth in our uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem? And so that can range from, there's this program that I saw in Chicago and I would love to bring it here, to we, uh, we've got this thing locally that we want to grow and test out and see if it can work. And uh, the two key questions that we'll be asking um, and would love to hear your input on are, what are we doing? What could we do to improve the trends that we see? And then how do we tell if it's working? Because often there's a lot of programs that uh, we need to continually assess um, what's being impactful. And so with all of that, I leave to this invitation. We would want to hear from you. Uh, we hope you're more interested in our organization than you uh, knew about at the beginning of our talk. And going live next week will be the format online to do a lot of that interaction and help us make the choices about programs to invest in, like Make Haven, like the library, um, and uh, things like sewing entrepreneurship resources. So very excited to participate. Thank you, JR. Great. And we're going to be uh, turning it over to Catherine. Catherine, you ready? OK. So I'm Catherine Kaz Wiley. I'm an artisan in the textile industry. I'm the director of uh, Tinaya Textile Designs and Co-op, uh, which is for profit. And uh, Tinaya is the one who persevere, which is non-profit. So the co-op has different uh, artisan in the textile. Uh, you have hat maker, uh, people that crochet, sew or knit, even a photographer, my husband. So these are sample of their work. I'm the millionaire up and um, Linda was a crochet person and she was a, one of the sewer and John uh, was um, the photographer down below on the right. I work for Delmonico Hatters. I am the person that repairs yes. the hats. Okay. On the nonprofit side, we do workshops. This was uh, one of the first workshops that we did to serve disadvantaged uh, youth. They learn how to sew, to weave, and even to felt, and they had a lot of fun. What, what is it? It's, I don't know why it's, oh, because when you hit the button. Okay, we had a different contract on the for-profit side, working with refugees, immigrants, people with disability, and uh, young or old. Uh, this is a contract with a refugee talented dressmaker for Iraq, uh, making uh, new clothes out of old clothes. This is our logo. On the background as Shay, Sharon Jones, who is an elderly and uh, has some disability and uh, dreamed of uh, making a beautiful aprons. So she got a chance to make her aprons, sell her aprons, and then create income. Everybody that we serve is uh, either creating income, family provision, or starting a small business. 
here is an occasion where we sell the wares of the artisans that are part of the co-op at different shows or venues. She was noticed by the Creative Art Workshop on Audubon Street for a one-of-a-kind aprons and she was invited to exhibit three years in a row for the American Artisan Celebration. And she was very uh, proud of, uh, of her accomplishment and so are we. She uh, also with myself um, was invited after the celebration uh, from a potter that was at the celebration to make a series of pottery aprons. So they have a split in the center in order for the potters to use their wheel. We have done contract with uh, startups, local, a uh, young lady from France, Odyssey bags, and um, uh, we have made patterns and um, prototype for a um, company in Westville, and we have worked with United Way. The nonprofit offer workshops again. So this workshop was uh, last year. We started with the first session with the accent on alteration, alteration know-how and alteration for business. So at the end of the session, a student could learn and create income by starting a small business. The second part of the workshops was how to make a summer outfit. We took the students to fashion district in New York City with a filming crew filming crew that uh, created a documentary. A special moment here with one of the students and a teacher, his teacher, with the filming, filming crew uh, that um, kind of spy on their, uh, on their little bit intimate set time together uh, as part of the documentary that can be seen on the website. Uh, the, Second session was about making a summer outfit in collaboration with uh, Eco Work Reuse Center in North Haven. The student got the chance to show what they have made at the end of the session, and they provided uh, free workshops for the people that came to see. Uh, the last session was about making a coat. So here we have a student making a uh, three quarter coat using uh, a cycle material again. And the quote was special. It was about saying a story that represents the thread of, a, of your life. So they, they, they had to make a quote, but also the quote had to reflect uh, where they were from and uh, something about their life. So they, they presented the quote at G Cafe and said their story in the same time. Uh, this, there is a mistake, my apologies, it's 2020, we um, followed up with an apprenticeship with a young entrepreneur that is also from Make Heaven. He has his own label called All Inclusive. Danny Mendes, we offered him a paid internship during the COVID renting an Airbnb uh, for hat making. Um, the coming January 2021, we will offer again Threads and Needle, uh, which um, is a program that won the, you know, underneath it's very small here, but it won the Yale Dwight Hall Innovation Social Award. It's in English, in Spanish. We have renting a space upstairs for Make Heaven. We can accommodate a, a larger group because of the restriction with COVID. And um, we welcome Spanish speakers. I speak Spanish. We will have um, quite a few sessions on alteration know-how again, and um, where people can come and bring their clothes to uh, learn how to repair them. We will um, start more likely in January with uh, the collaboration of Make Heaven for offered uh, scholarship and subsidized funding. The space is upstairs. My husband here, John, is painting and uh, we are making the space uh, gorgeous for uh, the students to come. Uh, registration will be on the website, styletinalia.org. Uh, please contact me. Thank you. Yeah, how you doing? Great. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start playing it and you can talk. Okay. 
All right, um, well, first of all, I'm a gospel rapper. I'm new to this, um, this like uh, entrepreneurial stuff. Um, we're working on a board game. I have um, my partner, which is also my cousin, Elias Lopez. And um, it's a Bible-based board game, it's tactical. Right now we're in a, a prototype state. And um, we've been working on it for about eight years now, off and on. Uh, downtown, the New Haven Library, a lot of people there to help me along the way with it. Um, uh, what else? Uh, how, how did they help you and, and what are we looking at? Well, they, um, but, uh, right, these are characters. Uh, these are characters that's a part of the game. Um, I don't, I don't want to go too much into detail about the game. That's why I'm kind of stuck. But only thing I can say is that it's a Bible-based board game and it's, it's uh, tactical and it's, it's teaching people about the Bible. Um, it's for everybody. Um, and uh, it's kind of medievalish. Um, it's, it's different. It's unique. And I believe that it'll be successful. Um, these drawings that you're looking at, my cousin Elias, he's the artist on the project. He drew all this stuff. Everything is original. As you can see right here, you see I'm drawing. Um, I designed the board. I designed the board. I designed uh, different things to the game. So I'm the designer. Um, he, uh, let me see. Right now, like I said, we're in a prototype state. Um, I, I can't go too much into the game, but so far so good. Um, uh, a lot of, well, most of the supplies that we need are here at um, Make Haven. This is a good place. Uh, we started with 3D printing for the, uh, the, uh, the pieces, the 3D model pieces, but we found out that as far as business-wise wise and um, mass production, um, it's not it's not a good decision to go with the um the three D piece pieces, but we did like the way they were coming out. So we're pretty much just dealing with the printers. Um, hopefully when the when the big printer is up and running, we definitely will be dealing with that a lot. And um, yeah, I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> You had uh, mentioned that you were looking for people to play test your, your game so you can learn more about that. Do you, do you want to say how you could be contacted and, and who you're looking for to play test? Yeah, um, definitely. We're always looking for people. Um, you can actually talk to my cousin about that part. Um, but um, I have an email. I'm also here at Make Haven. I'm on Slack. You could contact me. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, you can share your information in the uh, in the chat, maybe so people that want to play it can do that. Um, and yeah, see, and these, are, these are these are these are these are different characters. Like this right here is King Saul. I don't know if you guys know King Saul is in the Bible. This is Elizabeth. You know, different characters to the game. Um, these are original um, characters that he drew. And that's me. It's actually um these characters, they'll be like in a they'll be like in like a book. Um, you know, um, like that would be like a team book right there. But that's just a prototype. It, it'll look it'll look different when it's done. Um want to detail. Great. Great. Uh I think we we have uh we have David now. David, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? We can, can in fact hear you. we can in fact hear you. So I'm going to get you started. All right, great. Um, so hello, everybody. I'm David Wright. And uh, when I got the idea of how to revolutionize Windows, uh, the Make Haven people at Makerspace empowered me to become a window maker, a window right. 
So since then, I've been uh, making prototypes in the Make Haven wood shop. So on the left in this photograph is a standard double pane window. And my window is the one on the right. My windows have uh, better transparency than other insulated windows because the glass doesn't need coatings, vacuum coatings to work. So uh, here's a view from outside and uh, we can see reflections in the windows. Um, to make an analogy to outdoor where a double pane window is like a windbreaker and my windows are like a thick winter coat. They also reject heat in summer. Okay, so I've been using a thermal imaging camera to make comparison between uh, my windows and standard windows. Here, um, lighter grays are warmer like the sun and darker, uh, darker grays are cooler like outer space. Cooler objects are less insulating and the double pane window is cold because it doesn't insulate well. Warmer objects are more insulating and uh, my window uh, outlined in yellow on the next slide here, there, um, is warm because it insulates well. Um, the special framework of this window is made of wood, a uh, naturally carbon neutral material. And anyone, any maker in any maker space uh, can make my window with inexpensive materials uh, from local stores. Um, my window is insulating, um, has the insulation capability of an equal thickness of styrofoam outlined in yellow there that makes it five times more insulating than the standard double pane and two times more insulating than the most uh, insulating window on the market today. Uh, my window also insulates as well as a wall outlined there in yellow. And I believe that my window can be manufactured for the same price as standard windows and therefore provide immediate monetary savings through energy efficiency. So here I show a house that burns fossil fuel like natural gas for heat. Uh, burning fossil fuels uh, generates carbon dioxide and causes climate change. Uh, my windows will make zero emission houses much easier to build. Um, installing my windows uh, reduces the amount of energy for heating in the winter and thus reduces carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, my window also reduces the carbon emissions from air conditioning because 63% uh, of electricity is generated by burning fossil fuels. And that effect is magnified uh, because 60% of the fossil fuel energy is lost in generation and transmission. So the rate of CO2 reduction is roughly equal to the rate at which an entire tree absorbs carbon dioxide. Thus installing my window is roughly equivalent to planting a tree. Now, a single fallen tree can provide enough wood to make hundreds of windows because each window has the same carbon reduction power as a tree. A single fallen tree um, reborn in the form of windows has the carbon reduction power um, equal to that of a small forest containing hundreds of trees. So thus windows are an incredibly efficient way to use harvested trees and replanting those trees makes the process sustainable. Um, the revenue from windows, um, manufacturing and sales can make it worthwhile for owners to preserve their forests um, instead of clearing the land for other uses. This is an economically sustainable cycle. Now, in this graph, the upper blue line shows megatons of daily CO2 emissions over the course of 2019. And the lower blue line shows megatons of daily CO2 emissions over the course of 2020, which are significantly reduced due to COVID lockdown. The next graph shows gigatons of yearly reduction in CO2 each year from 1900. The red bar on the far right shows a reduction of 1.6 gigatons of CO2 during 2020. This reduction is temporary like other historical drops shown in blue bars. 
Now, gradually transitioning to my windows could lead to an even greater reduction than that of the 2020 seen in this graph. And these reductions would be lasting, avoiding trillions of dollars in costs due to climate change over the next 30 years. Thus, the pandemic reveals the power we have to control our climate. Now, you, you may be asking, how do right windows work? And believe me, I want to tell you, uh, the most successful way of sharing ideas while still preserving their value is obtaining a patent. So I've written a patent application with all the ideas that make right windows work. And given the global nature of solving climate change, I envision publishing this how-to document in one of the official languages for each patent office. I want to enable anyone in any country to participate by creating licenses for students, makerspace makers, universities, and manufacturers. In order to raise funds for this endeavor, I plan to run a GoFundMe campaign so please see a link in the YouTube video uh, later when it is posted if you're interested um, in helping out. Thank you. Now we can go to uh, questions from the, from the audience. Um, are there questions or do the presenters want to uh, elaborate on, on anything that they spoke about? Uh, I guess this is Julia. I have a, a question for, is it JD um, about the windows? Are you uh, actually running tests and sort of prototyping them now, like installed? Yes, yeah, I've been installing them in, in when, um, you know, in at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, that's an iterative process because, you know, I, I see how I'm doing and then I go back to the you know, back to the workshop and make the next prototype and, and iterate on that cycle. Um, and now that process is converged and I've transitioned into um, commercialization efforts and uh, fundraising, um, you know, for the patents. Um, so I managed to, you know, through that whole prototyping phase, I managed to convince myself that this is really worth doing. <laughs> but you can imagine it's a huge risk um, because, uh, you know, the cost of file uh, internationally is, is quite significant. So, All right. yeah. And can you say anything you learned about uh, bringing a product to market, or, you know, to, to the stage? So you, you have a patent, you've done a lot of testing, uh, you've had third parties do testing. What have you learned through that process that you wish you knew at the beginning of the process? Well, what I learned is that there is just an absolutely incredible network of people out there that are ready, willing, and eager to help. Um, it just really blew me away. Um, you know, Make Haven in particular being like sort of the very first support network um, that I had. And, um, you know, from there branching out, um, I was able to identify um, the Yukon um, IP Law Clinic as um, a partner. Um, you can apply um, to Yukon and um, obtain free legal services um, in exchange for um, setting up your business um, in Connecticut. So um, this is a way to generate tax revenue for the state. And um, Unfortunately, right now, uh, you know, due to the, the COVID, they're not currently accepting applications, but, you know, keep that in mind, uh, you know, all, all, of the, uh, all of the people out there with, with ideas, keep that in mind because it's a really great resource. And um, yeah, I could go on and on um, about all of the, all of the great, um, you know, resources, especially in Connecticut. Questions? Is there, is there a- Yeah, Bill, are you asking a question? Yep, is there an email for the board game to find out more about that? So you have to unmute, Ernest. Yes, you hear me? Yep, got you. Yeah, how you doing? Um, yeah, you can um, contact us at uh, E, well, I have a regular Gmail right now, but it's E, 
J I Z Z O N E W at gmail.com. Uh, Ernest, I'll put it in the chat so it's it's in an easier format to grab. Thanks. Thanks, Ernest. All right. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Uh, other questions? Actually, when you when he emails me, I I go more into detail about it. The converse. All right. So, uh, if we don't have any questions or uh, nobody has, uh, I have a any question. Yeah. Yeah. This um uh uh for for CNM, I'm wondering um you mentioned uh, sort of coming at this out of grad school. I was wondering um, how did you end up connecting with this particular project? This for me? Yes, yeah. Uh, I, it's under that, actually. I just graduated. Um, I, one of the co-founders, Pong, was my international counselor that we ran into one another one day, asked me what I was doing. I said I was doing mechanical electrical engineering and looking to work in medical device. And he said, we have a medical device startup looking for mechanical electrical engineer. Are you interested? <laughs> it's kind of how it worked out. Um, it was it was it was kind of a happenstance, but it worked out really well for me. So what what was the uh, butterfly connection there? You mentioned that briefly. Yeah, Butterfly Network is uh, a medical device company up in Guilford. Um, they do handheld ultrasound systems. They make handheld ultrasound systems. It's kind of like a revolutionary technology. Um, and I worked there over the summer on my junior year, and then that's when I like kind of decided I really wanted to do medical devices. I really enjoyed the fast-paced uh, environment and just kind of the entrepreneurship and the innovation and everything that was happening. So what are, what are the um, various applications for the uh, balance board? Um, in, to begin with, we're starting with uh, concussion rehabilitation, mainly because um, the literature says right now Vestibular ocular stimulus drives concussion rehabilitation up to four times faster than standard of care, which is rest. Uh, so that's what we're what we started with. Um, but obviously, there's a lot bigger applications in terms of kind of general balance rehabilitation, whether that be for any type of uh, acute or chronic illness that might uh, be the reason why you're not balanced well enough. It could be uh, kind of the uh, figuring out like working with the elderly with the full uh, at full risk and anything of sorts. So there's there's a lot of applications that we're we're discovering and possibly even gaming. Uh, we'll see. Um, is a balance board being used for diagnostic purposes and in, in addition to therapeutic uh, purposes? Or? That is that is the idea. the The idea is to hopefully use it as a baseline test as well. Um, which would allow us to keep track of kind of how well you're balancing and as through that baseline test, we can figure out if you're concussed or not, but that's more possible in, for example, like NCAA division schools, um, more uh, sports oriented places where we can have a baseline test, um, but we're trying to figure out other ways to diagnose without a baseline test if possible. And David, did you say that you had a, a Kickstarter going for this or? Yeah, so um, I, I sort of zoomed in on uh, GoFundMe um, as the preferred medium because um, with Kickstarter, you actually have to have a product um, which you can um, give in, in exchange for any, um, any money that you receive. Um, whereas uh, GoFundMe um, is a gift based and therefore has no tax ram ramifications um, and um, you know no um, product which is associated with it. Um, so it, at this sort of early stage, um, I think um, I, you know I can't really offer a product um, you know other than you know the sort of opportunity for you know anyone to engage with the with the IP. So that's why I'm going with uh, GoFundMe. Yeah. Cool. Do you do you have an active link that you could put in the chat here, and we'll add to the video? 
Um, that would be great if you could put the link in. Um, you know, right now I, I'm um, just at the, the concepts uh, stage. So um, it, maybe we can uh, post that link uh, later on. That would be great uh, when I actually get a page up and running. Thank you. So anyone else who uh, hasn't asked yet has a question? Hi, I, um, I came in a little late, so I'm not really sure. I, when everybody talked, I'm not really sure what everybody has going on. So I will have more to say, but I'm just kind of listening now. All right. Well, I, I think then, um, you know, I'll leave it open for a little bit if people feel comfortable, uh, you know, chatting informally after. Uh, but I think this kind of concludes the formal uh, presentation. Uh, I will remind you that we are planning on February 11th is what we had put down the uh, inventors themed um, version of this quick talk format. And uh, so, you know, let an inventor know they don't have to be a Make Haven member. They can just be familiar with inventing or having done it or, or want to do it. And we'll uh, we'll try and share a bunch of those a bunch of those stories. Um, so so with that, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. So Ernest, did you? Um you ended up deciding to not do the individual pieces because I remember talking to you about um, figuring out how to clean up your prints. Yeah, we decided, me and my partner, um, because as far as on um, mass production, it's yeah. not going to be worth it. You know? Yeah, it could be pretty, pretty bonkers to try and do cast pieces, but they were very cool. <laughs> Maybe I, I a deluxe it. edition, a deluxe edition. <laughs> yeah, I, li I liked it. It was, in, it was in my heart to do it. But I guess just because something in your heart, it's just not going to work. And well, for now, point. maybe later, you know. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I hope. I hope later. <laughs> I hope so. Well, I'd still be happy to help you if you want to like uh, finish one up and try and make copies of it. Make sure to hit me up. Definitely, definitely. I will. I will do. Thank you. No problem. Were there any um, games that that inspired um, your game uh, that you could mention or? To be honest with you, um, I am a PlayStation 4 type person. I um, played a lot of, um, I play a lot of RPG games like Dragon Age. I play a lot of um, turn-based uh, tactical games like um, Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem. So I was inspired by, by them games. It's, but no board games. Uh, no, nah, I haven't played much board games. Yeah, I, when I was uh, when I was uh, well, how how old are you? How old are you? If I if I if you don't mind me asking, oh no problem. Thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. Well, when I was when I was young, um, I uh, I played Dungeons and Dragons, so uh, that was that was sort of uh, an inspiration in many ways to me, just that creativity of, of that game. Mm. What was your go to class? Ah, uh, go to class. Well, that mm -hmm. that changed. It was like it went from like you know paladin to uh, magic user to uh, rogue. <laughs> oh, so you started out as the goody two shoes, and then you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah I see. <laughs> how about how about you? I think you also. Mm. Well, these days I, I I started out as as a wizard, but you know, I, I kind of tried. I've tried everything at this point. Except the paladin, that's generally. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't like rules as much. But my husband actually got me into it. <laughs> so Julia, have you? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Have you played um, a lot of board games, Julia? A fair number, though. Hold on, I can. Easy, easier to show. It's it's less me. But um, my my husband has sort of a, a condition <laughs> that is that's his gaming wall of of board games, and then uh, all of the minis and the books are behind me. 
So quite a few, quite a few. I'm not as good at it as some, but. Excuse me for cutting you off. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so you know, I I got I got some some experience. I'm definitely uh, probably not the best play tester. You should talk to Carrington if you haven't. He's hardcore. I I just wanted to jump in. This is Gina from the library, and Ernest, it's so good to see you. Wow. <laughs> You see, I said the library. You see, I said it. <laughs> I saw, I saw. And I'm going to turn my camera on just for you, even though I'm wow, already in my pajamas. Amazing. Because. <laughs> wow. This is the, the age of Zoom. There is no, there's no penalty for pajamas here. I know. Well, and now I'm like, it wants all these permissions. So that may not happen. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really good to see you, Ernest. We've been you talking told. about you. <laughs> I, you too. If, if I had enough more time, I would have mentioned your name. Oh, don't worry no. about that. I'm just glad that you you've got you're still working on your project. I know you've been working on that for a long time. So good. You're a big part of this project. You helped me. Uh, Gina helped me out <laughs> a lot. Uh, Carly, <laughs> Rose, Ms. Rose, everybody they helped me out a lot. They helped me you're out. I didn't even know. I didn't even know nothing about Photoshop or none of that. Illustrator. <laughs> You're too, you're too kind it's all your hard work man we just <laughs> we just help out when we can <laughs> but yeah it's good to see that you're doing well so i got your email i got your email yeah you do yeah absolutely <laughs> anytime and yeah it's been crazy um so the library we're trying to to open up more spaces so hopefully soon we'll be back in business over there too so, Definitely. but I'm glad that you're all set up over at Makehaven too. They've got that at Sweet Injection Molder. I mean, <laughs> that's what. Yeah, that's yeah, that's cool. what. Yeah, that's what. Uh, was it Julia? Mm -hmm. That's what she was trying to explain to me. Um, yeah, gotta check it out. Yeah, cool. Definitely, it's really great to hear from you. <laughs> and, yeah, and I think, I don't know, I think Nadine may still be online too, but um, I think I missed her presentation tonight. I'll have to go back and look and see if maybe it's videotaped, but Nadine's our new um, creative in residence at the library, and she's going to do all sorts of really cool stuff with food. I yeah. cannot wait. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, she actually pushed back to, to see if she could be in a future one. Oh, okay, great. Well, thanks, Jer. Yeah, I was you know, running in the door and I was like, oh man. And then that's okay. Sometimes things happen. <laughs> JR, you guys have some really cool new tools over there. It's pretty awesome. So great. I know where to send people for welding now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't have welding at the library? <laughs> no, no. It turns out they're afraid it'll set the books on fire. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Uh, so JR, I had a question about how you guys are running things at um, Make Haven now. Are you guys doing by appointment or is it kind of more open? Well, for, it's open for members um, okay. with a uh, limits by room for numbers uh -huh. and, uh, you know, tours and onboarding and those sorts of things are all by schedule. And if you want to meet with a, a teacher or facilitator, that's on a schedule. Okay. Cool. All right. I will pass along the information. Somebody was asking about it today and I was like, I'm thinking they're doing my appointment, but I'm glad that now I know. So <laughs> tell me that, tell me that wasn't God. Um, I didn't even know you were online. I didn't even know. Um, oh, me? That way. Yeah. I didn't even know <laughs> that was God. Every day, I'm always, every day, I'm always lurking himself. in the corner, Ernest. <laughs> I didn't even know. Hmm. Hey, it must have been, it's fate, bright mm -hmm. spot, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, how did your, how did your latest music video go? Um, well, one, it, it just won two awards in California on film festival awards because it's considered right. a short film. 
So I just won another one in California. And uh, also congratulations. A, thank you. And I also got some great news today. I just got a call from um, WIBC and they accepted one of my songs starting January, another one on the radio, but I sent them two. So God willing, I might have three songs on WYBC now. That's mainstream here. Oh, that's exciting. That's very cool. God, thank you. you Ernest, you said you were a rap artist, but you also had like some other descriptor there, um, something rap. Um, well, I forgot, what was, what was it? I'm a gospel rapper. I'm a, I'm a gospel rapper. Is that is that actually something that um, that you 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 can do at church, or is it something that was inspired by church, or just totally separate? I think it's for all people because um, people put a title on gospel, but to tell you the truth, gospel is however you are. God used you however you are. Um, I, I won't look at Kirk Franklin or somebody and say, "Well, I do music. I'm supposed to sound like that." That's gospel. I don't think that's the way it goes with God. So for all people, you know, I do it everywhere. Whatever, whatever is from the heart. There you go. You're smart, man. I can, I can tell you're smart. So what, uh, if we want to listen to some of your, your raps, what well, we could go to, um, uh, was it WIBC you said, or? Um, I have, to, I have, yep. I have a song pl playing on the radio, but also, if you just want to look at something, I have I have a, a few videos out. You could go to YouTube. You could type in E space J I Z Z O. Just type that in, and all my videos will pop up. I got about 13, 14 videos out. Or you could just yeah. E J I Z Z O. The e space J I Z Z O because a lot of people spell it E J I Z Z L E and they don't find me. Okay. So that is that your uh, that's your like your artist name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they gave they gave uh some friends um they actually gave me that name. I don't uh, it's nothing major. It's not like a big story behind it. We just walk in and they say, you know what? You look like E Jizzle. For now on, we're gonna we're gonna name you E Jizzle. I saw it. That's it. I bless you, brother. Well, well, hey, all, I'm going to sign off, but thank you to all of you at Makehaven again for an another wonderful share night. Um, and yeah, I wish you all well. <laughs> all right, Gina. Thank Bye. You. Well, I think, uh, I think I might sign out. Yeah, I spent the day preparing for this talk, so I haven't eaten any. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for participating. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, and it's, it's good to practice the, the pitch, you know? Have you had much of a chance to do it before? No, like this is, this is probably my first pitch ever right there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's it's tough because I guess you couldn't get too much into the specifics. I mean, that's the one. I mean, I, I I want the meat of the the thing, but I guess you're you're still in the quieter phase. Yeah, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, the it's sort of like um, I guess a judgment call there when to like just you know put out you know like okay, this is how it works, sort of thing. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, the fact that I've got the patent in the works makes me feel like, yeah, I could do it. But at the same time, it's like that hesitance to, you know, just like put it out there. So, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to do something else where you can, you can dive in, you know, when you can dive into it. Right. Yeah. So it, it yeah, it'd be, be interesting to see how it, how it evolves. Um, it's like, there's, there's that part of me that's still paranoid <laughs> and it's like sure well, yeah if it is yeah you got to figure out when you flip the switch because uh these things are i think it's more powerful 
if you know what you're talking about. You know, I think like one of the challenges you see it, and it's like, okay, it's a win it's a better window, but we don't know why. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, and and uh, at you know, at this point, it's like, um, you know, I maybe I could explain it, but then then I'm like, well, I may not be able to, you know, get everything in. So sure, kind of like gave it gave it like this approach was like, uh, you know. Take it on faith. <laughs> yep. Take it on faith. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna jump out. I don't think I don't know if it'll kick you guys out or not, but it seems like we're all wrapping up. Yeah, I'll be I'll be signing off here as well. So.